Um, Michael. Yeah. What's your bad take of the week? Well, I first want to say that apparently that woman who is a subscriber is saying something nice about me, and you have incredibly good taste. And <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being so clever. Um, yeah, bad take of the week. Again, I always have to say it, it's, it's really hard. And, um, you know, the funny thing about it, I'll just set this up by saying I always express my kind of distaste for Donald Trump and most of the things that he says. But the media really makes me look like I support him because they say really <laughs> dumb things. Uh, this is Aisha Mills. I guess she's a Democratic operative. And she uh, said this, I think, twice on two different broadcasts in the same day uh, on October 7th. And this is her on CNN talking about Donald Trump. I think that the danger of a Donald Trump is that he would absolutely try to uh, exterminate an entire group of people because he thinks that their genes are somehow different than his and faulty. And I say this with all the sternness that you hear in my voice because it is serious and Americans should recognize that. All right. That it, I, I'm going to say that that clip goes longer and it actually gets worse. But um, the the uh, extermination thing, she then compares him on multiple broadcasts to Adolf Hitler, guys. And I'm not gonna even invoke October 7th and doing things like that on a day that is, you know, the, the greatest bloodletting of Jews since the Holocaust. It's, it's just kind of gross in general. But let's be very clear about this. What Donald Trump said, was stupid and offensive. But if you go back to the things that Donald Trump has said over the years about genes, there's a compilation of him saying this, of people with good genes and then people with bad genes. He doesn't understand genetics, people. He just <laughs> means that's the good ones, that's the bad ones, the people that come in, those are the bad guys, they have genes, he doesn't get it. To go from there to say that someone's going to exterminate a race of people might be a bit of heavy, heavy breathing, don't you think? And I want to say one final thing about this, that we've been talking about a very bad leader, in my opinion, who has some very bad policies, some decent policies too, as a fascist for a very long time. That is a corrosive thing. And to say that we are in the Weimar Republic shows a stupid misunderstanding of history. Because in the last years of the Weimar Republic, people don't remember this, there were many, many, you know, dozens in some years, and in one particular, hundreds of people being killed on the street. That was how intense the pitched political battles were before the ascent of Nazi Germany. We don't live in that time. We live in a time where we can have a show like this and have people with different opinions. Donald Trump is not in danger of exterminating his own son-in-law. I don't suspect that's going to happen. And I think another really important thing in that take on a more serious note is just um, 98 percent of the material they use to accuse Trump of being racist comes from comments he's making about immigrants, mostly illegal immigrants. And again, just coming back to this theme, what they're trying to do is act like it is racist to care about your own nation, that that is a question of race rather than a question of citizenship. And you saw it there. Again, he made those comments about immigrants. OK, not the best comments. I would not say that, right? But um, you, you have this feeling like that he's talking about the way that they cast it. It's as though he's talking about Americans of a specific race. And of course, he's not doing that at all. He's trying to emphasize the distinction between being an American and being a non-citizen and saying it should mean something to be an American. Yeah, it's still a horrible comment. And he was uh, talking about violent um, illegals who have committed crimes, committed murder, et cetera. It does contextualize it. I don't think it excuses it, but you know, the contextualization is often ignored in, in, in these stupid uh, cable news debates that are designed to get people like me angry. And guy, by the way, mission accomplished. <laughs> so stop being an idiot. Um, all right. My bad take um, comes from Mehdi Hassan, who was very careful to remind us on October 5th of the real cause, the real people behind 9-11, he tweeted, never forget that it was the destruction of Beirut by Israel in 1982 that bin Laden would later claim inspired his attack on the Twin Towers in 2001. There was such a thing as blowback, and yes, violence begets <laughs> violence. Terror produces more terror. And as proof of this, he brought, yes, 
he brought bin Laden's own words. And I just thought that mm -hmm. this was so hilarious. I mean, a lot of people got really angry at this, blaming Jews for, you know, 9-11, uh, which, of course, he clearly was doing, justifying Osama bin Laden's actions, using his own letter as if accepting his logic for this is why he did it. <laughs> um, but I just think that this is hilarious. I, I think the reason that I'm able to laugh at it is because it seems to me like in America, when you go full anti-Semite, you get marginalized. That is the rule, and we see it again and again and again. Mm. Um, this kind of thing ultimately always hurts the person who says it more than it hurts the public sphere when it comes to these blessed United States of America. Um, I didn't see that tweet, by the way. <laughs> and the reason I didn't see that is because I discovered I was blocked by Mediasan, <laughs> whom I've never interacted with. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know, Medi, maybe you can uh, unblock me and we can have a conversation about why I don't believe Osama bin Laden's excuse. <laughs>